We fought many battles, haven't we, Captain? We have. And I've been a good adversary for you. Have I not? Then please. <coughs> I'm dead. Please. Killing in cold blood is against Space Fleet code. Wish I could help. Black Mirror is a science fiction anthology show whose latest season became bingeable on Netflix in December 2017. Each episode is a standalone short film with a different cast and a different director, though most of them are written by the show's creator. Do you worry about like technology, sort of smartphone addiction and all that kind of stuff? I, I mean, I worry about everything. Charlie Brooker. The black mirror of the title, Brooker has said, is the one you find on every wall, on every desk, in the palm of every hand, the cold, shiny screen of a TV, a monitor, a smartphone. With a few exceptions, each episode is set in a world very close to our own. Political structures are basically the same as our fashions, hairstyles, accents, traffic rules. The technological innovations imagined by the show's creators are very specific. A neural implant that allows you to rewind your own memories. An AI that pulls data from a deceased loved one's social media feeds in order to imitate that person. Setting episodes in a familiar context means the producers don't have to spend a lot of time world building. Instead, they drop a single technological stone into the relatively still waters we already know and help us to imagine the first ripples such technology would create. Instead of a post-apocalyptic landscape ruined by societal collapse, we see the first moments when a promising tool goes wrong. Even if you've never seen an episode, you've probably heard that the outcomes for characters are bleak. In Playtest from Season 3, for example, a happy-go-lucky man willing to test a new gaming system is driven mad by the neural implant that taps directly into his worst fears. You feel okay? Uh-huh. Feel great. In White Bear from season two, the woman we thought was the hero of the episode is actually a prisoner whose memory is wiped every night and who must reenact her attempt to escape every single day in front of a crowd that has paid to witness her humiliation. That's, that's what's doing it. That's what's making them act like this. I guess they were always like that underneath. There's murder. Will you please close your eyes for me? There's heartbreak. Amy, we've ruined this. There's destruction. You've ruined it. All made possible by technology. But an important common thread running throughout all episodes of Black Mirror is the recognition that it's the human choices that bring on the darkness. The technology itself is morally neutral. Every bleak ending must be enabled by technology, but it's set in motion by human choice. Let's look at this work in the episodes of season four, and then we can ask ourselves if there's any hope to be found in all the desolation. Gods, I hope so. In Archangel, episode two, a mother microchips her daughter with a neural implant that allows her to see what her daughter is seeing. She realizes the intrusive nature of the technology early in her daughter's life and vows to turn it off. But one night her daughter is out late, and she just can't stop herself from turning the monitor back on. Her choice feels to her daughter like a betrayal. And, well, let's just say the relationship doesn't end well. Crocodile, episode 3, shows a series of choices. In the opening scenes, a woman and her boyfriend driving home after a wild night hit and kill a cyclist on an isolated road. Panicked, they decide to hide his body. Years later, the now ex-boyfriend visits the woman and says he plans to let the wife of the cyclist know what really happened. The woman, now a successful architect, decides to kill him to protect her career and family. Then, she decides to kill the insurance adjuster, who finds out about her crime through the use of technology that allows her to see key memories. Then, she kills the woman's husband, 
And OMG, she kills the baby? Ah! <clears throat> Only the guinea pig witness can save the day and lead police to the perpetrator. So Archangel and Crocodile are pretty bleak in terms of outcomes for their protagonists. The mother is left alone. The murderous architect is arrested at her son's school play. If there's hope in these episodes, it's that the daughter in Archangel will now live a life free of surveillance, and the justice system in Crocodile will successfully prosecute the architect's terrible choices. The episodes USS Callister and Black Museum, though, are slightly different from the other episodes in the season because, if you look for it, there is also some hope to be found in human choices. But first, the despair. In USS Callister, the season premiere, a socially awkward programmer and tech company founder uses DNA from his colleagues to replicate and upload copies of them into a virtual reality simulation. The game his company has made available to the public, though wildly popular, is far less intrusive. But Daly, the programmer, has created a personal modification based on his favorite television show, Space Fleet. <clears throat> and has cast himself as the James Kirk-like captain. As the programmer, he has godlike powers and chooses to torture and intimidate anyone who doesn't bow to his authority or celebrate his courage. It's a horrifying form of existence from which death offers no release. The episode serves as a commentary on the state of toxic fandom in Western culture and a not-so-subtle stab-slash-love letter regarding the basic formula of Star Trek. Black Museum, Episode 6, and the season finale is a story-in-story -story episode in which several people make terrible choices. The surgeon, who used a neural link to sense his patient's pain, eventually enjoys causing pain and murders a stranger to get his high. A man allows his comatose wife's consciousness to be housed in his own mind, then, moving on with his life, transfers her consciousness into a toy monkey that can only like and dislike. The monkey loves you. The owner of the eponymous Black Museum makes a copy of a convicted murderer, so guests can experience and participate in his repeated execution. Terrible choices are all over the place, wreaking havoc and causing suffering. But here's the hope. Nanette, the latest upload in USS Callister, remains unbroken. Daly has uploaded her in an attempt to regain control after she scorns a romantic advance, and other characters encourage her to settle in. Instead, she develops a clever and dangerous plan to break her fellow prisoners out. Though they all expect to die, they are instead simply stripped of the space fleet modification and left alive in the world of the online game. Because of Nanette's stubbornness and courage, she and her crew now have their own strange new worlds to explore. And Nish, the tourist we're afraid for in the beginning of Black Museum, turns out to be making her own choices. The water she's offered the museum owner, Rolo, we learn, has been poisoned. The reason it's so hot in the museum is because she's cut the air conditioning to make him thirsty. Nish is there on a mission to free the holographic copy of her father an innocent man whose mind has been broken after being continually executed. She kills and traps Rolo and burns the museum. As a bonus, she rescues the woman whose consciousness is trapped in the toy monkey. That brings us to Hang the DJ, one of the only episodes in Black Mirror's four-season run that is obviously optimistic. But guess what? In spite of the computer-generated world, and the personality matching technology, it's the choices made by Amy and Frank that earn them their happy ending. They've chosen 998 times out of a thousand to rebel against the system and be together. The app has simply let them act out different versions of the beginning of their relationship. Now they're all set to start in real life. The remaining season four episode, Metalhead, okay, this one is unrelentingly bleak, it's also the only one set in a world not immediately recognizable as our own. Much more world building is required here, and the black and white shots help accomplish that. Someone somewhere must have created the murder dogs, but that's all left vague in favor of emphasizing the immediate dangers. Yet even in this colorless world, there is a celebration of the human spirit. 
The main character, Bella, is brave, clever, and self-sacrificial. The warmth of her radio calls starkly contrasts the technology that is cold, unstoppable, and wordless. And when we learn at the very end that she and her comrades came to the warehouse looking for a teddy bear, it's both a stab in the heart and a reminder that humans need those warm, fuzzy comforts to face the cruelty of the world. Bella and her companions chose to risk their lives for the chance to give that comfort to a dying child. So, to sum up, when there is a happy ending, or what passes for one in Black Mirror, it's as much a result of human choice as the terrible consequences are. Each bit of new technology is capable of wreaking havoc, but only when humans choose that path by indulging fear, greed, jealousy, vengeance, selfishness, and all the other worst angels of our nature. At the very least, Black Mirror can remind us to keep our eyes on the ball and keep us hoping that we make the right choice when our chance comes to destroy our own lives through technology. Thank you for watching. If you like this and other essays on this channel, then hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next one. Also, consider supporting us through Patreon. Patreon is the best way to help create more Trek expertise. Relevant links are in the subspace below. And be sure to take a look at our latest adventures over on our other channel. Thanks, and try not to despair.